going on everyone it's mike from this old hot rod remember me it's been a while So what, I've been, what I'm working on right now is I had picked up a 3031 two-door sedan body probably about six months ago now and I purchased it to flip it. Uh, I have an old Model A chassis that someone Z'd which they didn't really do that good of a job on so I dragged that into the shop yesterday and I was able to get the body into the shop yesterday as well been a couple months and a lot of people messaging me what's going on how you doing when are you gonna do videos broken record deal again I'm self-employed I'm a house painter uh, I work by myself I do not have help uh, I started my YouTube a couple years ago I think uh, a lot of motivation a couple years younger my son was helping me I had more free time but this time now I don't have any help my son doesn't work for me anymore uh, I will not hire somebody. Uh, I don't want to deal with people, especially guys in the painting industry. Uh, it's like fishing from the bottom of the barrel type of deal. I work by myself. Problem with this year was I took on a lot of work because of the economy, not knowing how things were going to go. And I think a lot of other people had that same mindset. And what, what I mean by other people is the builders and the people that I work for. Everyone's trying to get stuff done. And it has just been a wave of work, and I have not had any time. And when I do have free time, it's at 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night when I get home. Sometimes it's later than that, and my feet hurt, my knees, my ankles, my back. Everything hurts. It feels like I get hit by a truck. All I want to do is just rest, eat dinner, and go to bed. And that's kind of what I've been doing. I have the top garage up top. And that's where the 34 or 5 window is. And that's kind of be that's going to be my next big project. But in the meantime, what I needed to do was I needed to move all the equipment, all the tools, the parts, uh, everything out of that garage, move it down into this shop. In any event, I've just been really busy and appreciate everybody reaching out and asking what's going on. So I wanted to do a quick update. So I want to just let you guys know what my next project's going to be. Before I get back onto the 34, the motor is at the machine shop. That's going to be probably a couple months before I get that back because he was pretty backed up. I ordered a new clutch, a new disc, new um, throw up bearing for that. So that'll probably be in sometime next week. So I'll be able to go get that. Flywheel, I just had resurfaced. So that's ready. That's all done and ready to go. I've been moving stuff into the lean to and moving stuff down into here uh, just to try to get things ready so we can get Allie's camper trailer put up in the top garage. After the 34 is down here, that'll go in the garage, and we're going to work on that up in the garage. I had a project. I had something I bought. I think I showed you guys. It was a 32-door sedan, and I, I bought that to flip it. Uh, I overpaid a little bit. I actually have that body now. It's in the building, and right behind it is a Model A chassis. What I'm going to do is over the next two or three weeks, I got a little bit of a lull at work, I think next week anyways. Uh, I'm going to get to work on building a new floor structure, uh, going to channel the car probably six inches, I'm going to do something like an old East Coast style hot rod. I'm not going to chop it, it'll just be a flat floor, kick up on the rear, I uh, have a Model A rear axle, Model A front axle, I have a split wishbone kit, uh, I have seats already for this car, uh, 30 grill shell, uh, I got the steering assembly from a Willys pickup. Just gonna try to crank it out. I said I'm gonna give myself probably a couple of weeks to work on it, maybe two or three weeks. Uh, I need to get some motivation. I kind of lack in the motivation uh, just because of I've just been tired and I can't really focus on things until my shop is clean. I hung up some dashboards from the top garage up there. Got a lot of stuff that I've been adding to the walls. You can see the toolboxes are all on that side now. And you can look over there and see. Furnace is way in the back corner. I got my box pan brake, my jump shear, and I'm gonna pan across the side, my bandsaw, my drill press, and here's the body. Behind the body, I have a grinding wheel, uh, my acetylene tanks. So I ended up moving the press, and then I have my slip roll 
tucked right behind my TIG welder and then my English wheel. So let's uh let's pan down to this. Uh, this is a 3031 chassis, and the reason why I could tell is these radiator mounts are dropped down a little bit on a 2829. They're they're close. They they kind of bump up. So that's how you know it's a 28, 29, or actually a late 28, early 29. Early 28, that has a different mount here for the engine. I have one of those out back. What my plan is, I'm going to use this frame. I'm not going to box it. If someone in the future wants to box it, that's totally up to them. What my plan is, is to fix this frame. Somebody started to Z it. So what I need to do is finish the Z on the chassis, on the kick, the kick up on the rear of the chassis. I'm then going to uh, get everything, make sure it's all square, which at this point everything is. I already have it clamped in space. The frame's leveled. And after that, I'm going to remove these mounts. Anything that's on the outside of the rail of the chassis, I need to remove because I'm going to channel the body of the car. And that body needs to set down over this chassis. Not going to have any wood in the chassis as far as the body mounts go. It's just going to be metal on top of the chassis. I already bought the metal. I went this morning and picked that up at the steel company. I'll show you guys what I got. I'll tell you guys how much I spent on it. So I'm going to keep a running tally on this car. I'm going to tell you guys what I spent on the body. What I spent on the frame, I already told you I spent $20 for a complete steering setup, the wheel all the way down to the box. No pitman arm, so I need to find or build a pitman arm. But I'm going to keep a tally on what I have invested into this car. I'm going to sell it and see what I can get for it. It'll be something that someone can take, hopefully, and build off of in the future. Get into the hot rod and hobby for, you know, a low expense and um, just move this along because I'm, I'm sick of looking at it. <laughs> Let's thank Mickey McCola. He's a local guy from Hanson, Mass. He's not too far from me. Him and I became friends. I bought, actually he sold me the steering unit, steering column that I have in the T. And he gave me a lot of additional parts at that time. This is a split wishbone kit. So these are mounting plates. I'll show you this one. Obviously, they're the same. So that's a mounting plate. You can put it on the outside of the frame, like this. Or I can put it on the inside of the frame. That's your tie rod end, and that's your bung. So this is what actually welds into the wishbone. So I'm gonna be using those on this car. These were free. So I can't add any expense to the car for those. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a walk back. I'm gonna show you guys the back of the frame, the kick up. I purchased this frame off of a guy up in Drake at Mass. I went to look at this frame, and when I got there, this frame was not good. So I was pretty upset, to be completely honest, and I think he kind of knew it. And he said, well, I have another frame I'd be interested in selling. I feel bad that you drove all the way up here, and this frame isn't exactly what you wanted. So at the end of the day, I ended up buying both frames. And I paid $50 for this frame. The frame cost me $50. The complete front axle I got from Brandon Fish in Tornado's Car Club. I didn't pay anything. He gave me that for free. He wanted to just move it along. I got the frame for $50. And the body, again, like I said, I kind of overpaid for it. I paid $1,500 for it. Uh, it was too much. Honestly, it's probably a $1,000 body at best. But I'm going to try to make it up with... Uh, the work that I'm going to do and the parts that I'm going to add to it and then hopefully be able to sell it and make some money on it. Let's go back and look at the kick up. I'm going to drop you guys down and uh, hopefully get a better view of this kick up. Can you see me? Not really. This is how the person did the kick up and how you can see he can cut it. He cut it at a 45 degree angle. And If you're new to this hobby, jump on the ham. H-A-M-B and just do some research. You know, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. There's plenty of videos on the ham that were on previously on YouTube or still are. <laughs> now what I need to do is I need to weld it here, weld it across the front, weld it across the back, weld it everywhere that I can, and then I'm going to have to add a couple of pieces here to add some integrity to the kick up. So what I did is I already measured the frame square. I got my lengths and everything measured last night. I know I'm good. You can see this pipe here. So when he cut this frame, when he cut the rear kick up 
or the rear cross member off this chassis, the whole chassis pinched in. It went in. So I had a piece of the roll bar that I bought for the T. I cut it just, I cut it the same length as the furthest point back, and then I just took a hammer and pounded it in until I got the exact width that I needed. So I, I used this as a spreader bar, spreaded the frame rails out, and now I have it exactly where it needs to be. So at this point now, I can throw some tack welds on this, and then like I said, start adding some filler pieces here, just to create some more structure and integrity. So now what I need to do is I add, need to add a few plates on either side, get everything welded in place before I remove this bar. I can still access it and pull it out from underneath. Once that bar is out of there, then I can kind of fill everything in, box it in on the back end, add some fish plates on the outside edges. I should be good to go as far as this rear kick up. Again, I'm not going to box this frame. I'm going to leave the stock Model A cross member, the middle cross member, transmission cross member. I'm going to build a box off of it and I'm going to add on a set of early Ford pedals. But again, I'm not going to go super crazy. I'm not going to do the brakes. I'm not going to... I'm just strictly going to make this thing a rolling chassis with a car body on it. Just trying to make it something cool and uh, hopefully someone will take it off my hands and I make a few bucks on it. All right, so like I said, we're going to get this thing set in place. I want to get that rear kick up welded together at this point. I'm then going to try to find either some box tubing or some angle iron and then I'm going to make some fillers top and bottom. Probably be some type of a triangle situation deal top and bottom. I'm going to show you what I bought this morning. I'll tell you how much I paid for it. Grab some gloves so I don't make myself all messy. I thought I had some gloves though. What I'm going to use is just one inch box tubing. It is 16 gauge. It's the thinnest gauge that they had at the metal store. So I have two full lengths. Uh, each length is 24 feet. So I have 48 feet total. I have them cut down at eight foot lengths. I paid $81 well, in change. So let's call it $82. You guys have watched, most of you guys watch Bad Chad, Chad and Jolene up in uh, Nova Scotia. You've seen how Chad does his floor assemblies when he builds, like he, when he built his, uh, the floor in Jolene's race car. He simply just does basically a, a mock-up or a tracing of the frame on the car that he built. And then he set the body down over it. He plasma cut out the subrails and all that stuff. I'm essentially going to do the same thing. Uh, I did, I've done a few other cars. I've channeled two other cars. One of them is the sedan in the back of the garage. Bad Chad wasn't a thing when I started building these cars, so or at least if he was, I didn't know about him. Kind of spent a lot of time on the ham, doing research, trying to, you know, could find ways to do things that was really overwhelmed how uh, people did their channels. You know, it was really difficult for me to kind of decipher how they did it just through photos. I ended up coming up with my own way how to do it that made sense for me. And that worked for me because, again, I do everything by myself. I didn't have a chain fall. I didn't have a hoist or anything like that at the time. I just had my brains and my two hands. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I channeled my sedan. A couple people reach, reached out to me at the time that I did it when I was posted on the ham. And they said they've never seen anybody channel a car like that. And they said that the way you did it makes such perfect sense and it's simple anybody can do it by themselves and I'm going to show you guys step by step how I did that but first what I need to do is again I need to get to work on this chassis get the chassis straight make sure everything's welded the kick up is done right and then once that's done I'm going to get to work on my floor structure I'm going to get everything cut out of the bottom of this this sedan body and then get the sedan body set down on it I do now have a hoist as you guys know, Harbor Freight Special, you can see it here. Got my chain fall on there. I will be using that to lift the body up, move it over, and you're gonna set the body down over the chassis. It'll just make my life a lot easier. Once that's all said and done, if I pull everything back apart, get the axles slid underneath there. I'm just gonna run regular stock Model A stuff. Uh, no dropped axles, I'll pull out some leaf springs to try to get the front down a little bit lower. So I already got a few of the spots all ground down where everything needs to be welded. I triangulated my measurements from my mounting holes, from my center hole, for, from my 
my U-bolt holes to the front. Fire up my welder and get some tack welds on these so I can pull these clamps off and then slide this spreader bar off. Woo! Listen to that rain. Nasty out there today. And forgive me if I get cold and need to fire up the heater. Because it's not a very nice day out here. Normally, if you were to have a complete frame before it was already Z'd or cut, you would essentially you would take some metal, any type of metal, box tubing, you know, thick plate steel, you would weld it across the back of this, right in front of what the area you cut it, because at that you wouldn't want the frame to pinch in. But I bought the frame already cut, so that's why I added this piece of tubing in here. I had it, it was free, it would work, it was long enough, and like I said, all I did was I cut it to length, wedged it in there with a hammer, spread the frame rails out so it was the same width as the rear portion of the frame, and then you saw me just weld it together. So really, that's it. So now what I need to do is I need to flip this frame over so I can weld the back side of this, the point on the back of the frame rail underneath. Once that's welded, at this point, it's welded on there and then I need to add some bracing. Luckily these Model A frames aren't all that heavy. So it's not too much for one person to be able to move around, you know. I moved everything in my garage so I don't know where anything is anymore. I still got some moving things around to do, but for the time being I just wanted to, wanted to get back in the shop and have some fun, you know. I went and grabbed some box tube. I had out back and sitting outside. This is 3 16 wall, two inch box tube. This should be enough for me to cut out of so I can build my pieces here on the back just to give this a little bit more integrity. So I'm gonna whip up some cardboard templates, transfer them over to my metal, clean the metal first, transfer them over to the metal, get all this cleaned up, and then get a small piece welded in here. I'll add another piece on top and do the same thing on the other side. And as far as I'm concerned, the back of the frame, the kick up, will be done. I am going to have to trim off these tabs where they stick out. Those will have to get trimmed off because they won't fit up inside the body. And then I'll just weld the cross member to the frame rail itself. And then just on one part, everything else will still be riveted as it was from the factory. Flip it back over and then uh, I'll do the top side. At that point, back of the frame will be done. I'm gonna get this piece of metal cleaned up and get my template trans made and transfer it over to here, get it cut out and get it welded on the frame. I'm gonna shut the camera off and I'm gonna skip over to the fun part.
right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lop off these, the ends of this cross member. And the reason I'm doing that is two reasons. The first reason is because I know I have to. The second reason is because I need the body to go down over the chassis. If these wings are on the back of the end of this rear cross member, it's too wide. It won't go down. This is a spot where typically the wood would mount, and that's where you would mount your body. It would go underneath the subrail. The subrail would sit here, and the body mount would go right through the piece of wood. But because I'm not using wood, and I'm not putting the body on top of the frame, I want to channel it, I need to remove this. Otherwise, the body won't go down over the frame. It's just not wide enough. So I'm going to just cut it right here, right there, and cut it here, and then down here. And then what I'll do is I'll weld it where these two pieces of metal meet right here on the front edge on both sides. And as far as the modifications you need to do for a frame on a channel car, that and removing the other mounts from the firewall back is basically it for now. So once you do this once or twice, you basically know the steps, you know? so I'm gonna wrap this video up here you can kind of see what I got done I'll take the camera off the tripod and I'll show you welds aren't the most beautiful thing because again this frame was pretty pitted it, it did have primer on it I ground it down best I could but I couldn't get down in all the pits so I just you know without adding trying to add too much heat I got it welded up pretty good it's all solid um, and the side profile of the step now, instead of it just being a small sliver of metal that held it all together, it's got a substantial piece of metal now. Uh, I will end up fish plating that just for safety reasons on the outside. And then if someone in the future decides they want to plate this frame, then they can certainly go ahead and do that. Uh, the next person who may own this car may end up wanting to just put a banger in it. I don't really know. All right, so you can see, like I said, don't judge me on my welds, but that is now the side profile of the Z. So you can see where I tried to carry roughly the same thickness of the frame on the actual stepped area of the frame itself. And then it goes back to the very rear portion of the frame rail and then to obviously the rear cross member. You can see from the top down how I cut these ears off. You end up removing about an inch and a half on both sides. And again, the reason you do that is in order to, is to get the, the body to slide down over the chassis. So again, this side's the same. I used one template and I was able to get all four pieces out of one template, which makes sense. And a couple slight modifications here and there, cleaned up a few spots on the metal, but again, it's, it's welded. I just kissed it real quick with the grinder just to kind of clean it up. Get this chassis rolling, and once it's up and rolling, throw this crusty thing on there. You guys recognize those stickers from the coupe? So it's got the front portion of the sub rails back to here. But again, the whole bottom of the car, the doors are actually in fairly decent condition, but the whole back half of the car is pretty bad. Sides of the cowl are pretty bad. I have an extra cowl. I'm sorry. It's dark. I do have an extra cowl I'm not going to paint this thing. I'm just going to leave it exactly the way it is The dings and dents looks like something at some point had fallen on this I'm going to heat this up with my torch 
probably get that bent back out bad spot here again I'm gonna replace see this side of the cowl a little bit better it's really bad but I have a nicer cowl outside behind the building that I'm gonna use so I'll just remove these pieces of metal and replace those with the pieces outside uh, as long as I can get the thing sitting on the chassis good and bolted down onto the frame you can get the doors open and closing good that's gonna be basically it as far as the body goes I'm not going crazy on this thing but I'm happy I got this frame put together like I said I'm, I'm into this frame for $50 so the next thing I'll do on the frame is remove all the brackets I'll hang on to them but I'm gonna remove them because we're not gonna need them all right everyone well that's gonna be a wrap for me for today it's Friday December 23rd a couple days before Christmas it's been a while since I've done a video as you guys know uh, I just wanted to get back out into the garage and kind of just start getting the flow of things again and get motivated so I thought throwing this little this little two-door sedan together would be a fun project something to get me back into the shop kind of get me back in the groove I'm hoping to have a little bit more time coming up over the next couple of months during winter. I do still have quite a bit of work ahead of me. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to free up some time. When you lack the energy, a lot of times you lack motivation. And it's easier to just go sit on the couch and watch TV. So uh, I decided I'm not going to do any more product videos or like review videos or anything like that. I've just decided to, to not do that uh, if there's a tool and I buy it and I like it I'll tell you guys about it um, unless it's something really cool that I that, that maybe there's a small company in USA and they want to send me some products uh, you know because they they want me to help them spread the word and advertise them I'll certainly do that but I don't want money from people um, I'm just not that guy I've never been that guy. I just, I love doing this stuff when I have the time and the energy. I don't, uh, people work really hard and things are tough right now for a lot of people. And I don't want to make money off the backs of people who just watch these videos. I will never, ever, mark my words, I will never have a Patreon. I will never ask anybody for money. I will. Ne I don't expect anything from anybody. If if I make these videos and you guys watch them, then great. I'm gonna keep watch making the videos. If I make videos and no one watches them, I'm gonna go back to what it was like four years ago, three years ago, before I started a YouTube. Just gonna do this stuff on my own and uh, post stuff up on Instagram and Facebook. But I'll never ask anybody for money. I'm not the type of person that's just looking for the next big thing or or trying to come up with new ideas to make more money I work really hard in my day job and I'm really good at what I do I make a good living this stuff for me is fun uh, YouTube pays me I don't make a lot of money you know especially when I don't produce videos when I do make videos to be honest with you, when you know, at the height of, of my video making, at the beginning of the 34, I was making about five to six hundred a, mo uh, a month. At the beginning of the 27 Roadster, I was making eight to nine hundred a month. Um, and but I could, I just can't keep up with that. I can't keep up with the content. I can't do two week, two videos a week. Not only is it taxing on myself, it was taxing on Allie and my relationship. It got to a point where every single night I was either in the garage or I had headphones on sitting in front of a computer editing videos and we basically were living two completely separate lives and I don't really want to do that. I don't want to be the creator of that. Uh, I want this to be something I enjoy. I don't want to burn myself out and truthfully I kind of did. And you guys see that because there hasn't been any content. So I'm very transparent. I really try to be upfront, honest, and tell people just how things are. And I don't make a lot of money on YouTube. Right now, if I do one video a week for a month, let's say, I'll probably average somewhere in the three to four hundred dollars a month range. It's great. But the amount of time it takes to produce those videos is astronomical. I make that same amount of money in about three hours of 
week, three hours of work in one day, I make the same amount of money as I do in a month of producing and, and making content for YouTube. If, if it's one video a week, you know, if I'm doing two videos a week and I'm making, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a month, I make that in a day. I, I, I make that in a day's work with what I do and the, how fast I work. And sometimes it's half a day, depending on what job I'm doing. So it's really difficult for me lately to stop what I'm doing work-wise, to be in the garage working on something and producing a video that takes me 30 hours, 40 hours sometimes worth of work. That the comparative, I, I just, I can't. I have to go to work and make my money and pay my bills. And, and that allows me to do this as a hobby. The cars don't pay my bills. The cars will probably never pay my bills, and I don't ever expect them to because I'm put. I end up putting it all back on myself again, and uh, I just can't do that to myself. I work really hard with what I do. I've created what I have from scratch. Uh, I started my own business when I was 22 years old, and I'm now 48, almost 48. It's been a long go. Uh, I've been painting for almost 30 years. Started when I was 18 years old. Day after my 18th birthday, I started painting houses. It'll be close to 30 years of house painting, and again, I started my own business 22 years, 22 years old, almost 26 years ago. Uh, that's my main focus, and truthfully, I'm tired. I'm getting tired, and I want this to be fun. I want to enjoy coming out in the garage and working on stuff, and and that's the reason why I'm working on this sedan right now. I want something fun, something a little bit challenging, but something quick. Uh, like the T build was a great build. It took me a year, but that, it's a long year when you, and, and it's and it's almost every day that I'm working on that T. So it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of time, and there's a lot of sacrifice involved. And lately, I just haven't had the energy, and I haven't had the time. But I thought if I could spend a couple of weeks and get this sedan body set down on the frame, kind of get it looking like a cool old timey hot rod and maybe put it up for sale and try to make a couple of bucks on it. Find someone that doesn't have the ability, time, or skill that I do. Not that I'm anything great, but I have enough skill to throw this together uh, that maybe it'll kind of turn into something and someone else can take it from there and take it to the finish line and I'll see it driving down the street someday. So that's what's going on, that's what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, who knows? So I'm gonna come up with a name for this little two-door sedan. If you guys have any ideas, it's going to be an East Coast style hot rod, heavy channel, a heavy channel two-door sedan. It's going to have um, early Ford style wheels, 15 inch, like a, like a uh, F1 style wheel. I have four white wall tires already, big and littles. Oops, the sun's coming out. Wow, oh, geez, you see how much brighter it just got? Wow. I got big and littles for it, like I said. I have the steering, I have two, a pair of bomber seats, I have a gas tank, a marine gas tank. I got a couple dashboards up on the wall, I'll probably throw a junky one in here. Do I'm gonna do the patch panels, I'm gonna kinda get it all fixed up best I can and just get it to a point where I think someone else can take it along and finish it. So, uh, if you think I think of a name, let me know, throw it in the comments. And uh, it's been a while, but want to say hello. Allie's doing good. Allie's extremely stressed and busy with work, as I am, as you guys know. But we're still alive. We're still good. We're healthy. And uh, we're happy. So we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.